Okay, so this is Kayla's um, grammar tutorial for converting a grammar, which is a set of rules, into a parse tree. And this is the same thing that Antler is going to be doing. Okay, so first we need a grammar, which we can define here. So this is my grammar, and um, a grammar is basically consisting of a bunch of production rules, which are things that it may go into. So we see this one here, and it's left recursive, so it's going to be ambiguous, which is bad, but that's okay. We're just going to use it to see how an input stream would react um, given this grammar. So we, have, um, so we have these production rules, but first you need to figure out what exactly the terminals are. And the terminals must form the frontier of a parse tree. Okay, so the frontier of a parse tree is what occurs at the very ends, like um, the, like the leaf nodes basically here. So this is the frontier, and we see these are all terminals. So how do I know these are terminals? Well, because terminals are things that they actually are, right? Like, in this case, the terminals are going to be the brackets, the plus sign, the multiplication sign, the division sign, and then also A, B, and C. Now, I know that A, B, and C are terminals because they are in the lowercase, and this means in my notation here that we have a terminal, meaning that we actually want the value A, B, and C, rather than a capital E, which means to refer back to the grammar again um, using basically recursive call. Okay, so now we actually try to parse an input stream. Now actually, well, this, this one over here is valid for my grammar. This would have been the input stream of A plus B. And we see how I just threw that into the parse stream, and that's how it goes. But with a more complicated input stream, that's what we're going to do. So our input maybe something like a plus a times b divided by c. Okay, so now I need to figure out how to parse this. So what you always need is the start symbol. In this case, our start symbol was e, and that just makes sense. It's the starting symbol of the grammar. So again, it's going to be e. And then we kind of intuitively do this, where we look and we say, what are we, what production rule would most likely lead to my result? Okay, and it's a bit of doing stuff in your head, but um, anyways, this one here is going to be e times e, and that kind of just makes sense. And you're kind of going to see soon how it will break down and become our final answer. So I choose my e times e. And now I'm going to choose. That was a little messy. I read that. My production rule of the bracket. So, bracket e bracket. Okay, so this I chose because I see that well I have this times a plus a in the brackets times b, and I know that anything in the brackets is another word is another production rule for my grammar e. So. I'm kind of like, again, this is very intuitive. It's not what a program would do. It's not just going to trial and error everything. A program was actually going to use the first and follow to figure out the parse tree, but we're just doing this in our head. So this E now can be broken down into E plus E. And that's pretty obvious why I chose that one, because of the A plus A. And then each of these E's can also be A. And I choose this, of course, because it's A plus A, and A is one of my uh, terminals and my production rules. So I have this. And now I go into my last symbol. Um, oh, first here, when you're reading the frontier, let's read it. Frontier from left to right, we have the bracket, A plus A bracket times. So we see the, all the terminals are on the leaf nodes, so we're all good here. This makes sense. And we also see so far, we have done 
up to here. And so the last step then is just going to be, oops, not the B. Can I undo that? No, I can't undo that. Okay, not the B yet. We haven't done the B yet. We just just do the multiplication. Okay, so I need to do the B divided by C, and that was pretty easy. So I'm going to choose my production rule of division, and then this is going to become the B and C. Okay. So B, oops, divided by C. All right, and then at the very end. You figure out what your frontier is and you just write it out for yourself. So we see it. this is the frontier of the tree. And then you check and you say, is this frontier the same as my input stream? If it is, then you've correctly parsed the grammar. If it's not, then yet yeah, you've done it incorrectly. So it has to be the same as the input. Okay, and then you're basically done. But you may want to further take this and say, is this grammar ambiguous? Meaning, could I create another parse tree um, that looks different than this, but gives the same frontier? And you probably can, because there's two types of parsing. There's leftmost and there's rightmost. So this tutorial is just on the leftmost grammar, which we just done, or the leftmost parsing, sorry, that we just done. Um, and I'll do another one on the rightmost. Anyways, but um, that's basically it. So you're done, and you can have any kind of grammar that should work. This, uh, this way of doing it should work for any grammar given your production rules. Okay, thank you.